guys. Welcome back to Bud Hunters TV. I'm here with my good friend David. How's it going, yo? We're headed up to uh, go help sight in his AR-15 that he bought. I'm very excited about that. And uh, he's going to be doing iron sights. We put a, a red dot on it a while back, got that all sighted in, and got it adjusted. And uh, sorry, but that was before the channel was even up. <laughs> that wasn't a thing yet. Long before that. <laughs> Back in the back, back way back when you know what I'm talking about. But we're uh, we stopped by Whataburger, got us some breakfast this morning. Yeah, shout out to Whataburger, they're better than In and Out. I don't care what you say. Holiday, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, David's from Oregon originally. So, if you guys are from Oregon area, and you got West, yeah. all of that. Hey, where's the what's the what's the Whataburger of Oregon? What's like that hot spot in Oregon? It's more so like individual spots. There's not really a chain. Oh, okay. So there's not like one chain that dominates. If anything, close to it would have to be Burgerville. Burgerville. Burgerville, and they got some fire onion rings. Oh yeah, all right then. Because they make them with Walla Wallas. So. A what? A Walla Walla onion. It's like a giant. Giant. They kind of call it a walla, walla. Yeah, I think they grow in Washington. Well, hey, if you got that hashtag walla walla onion rings, <laughs> walla, walla. you know, make sure to like that video for the for the, for the walla walla. If you especially if you work at Burgerville, go check out Burgerville. <laughs> if you're in Oregon, check out Burgerville. Yes. It's, it's the hot spot. They got them in more in more places, but that was one of the. That was one of the spots. Kind of northwest kind of thing. Yeah. We don't have those down here in Texas, or we'd go today. But uh, in Texas, it's Waterford, man. That's that's the spot. Uh, but we're gonna be going up to the range. We got to stop by and pick up a sight adjustment tool for his AR-15 iron sights. A lot of them have a special tool that you have to use, and I'm sure there's you know redneck ways to rig it around to not use that tool, which is fine. But you know, it's better just to go. You know, for me, I'd rather go spend the money one time and get the right proper tool then have to remember to bring the pliers and screwdriver and everything else to try to do it over and over again the wrong way but we're gonna go up there get a pick up that tool and i'll let you guys skip the shopping you're welcome and uh then i'm gonna and i didn't bring the regular camera today so today we're just doing it with my phone and uh so the video quality is not going to be perfect but that's what we got. But we'll see you guys at the range. And uh, boom, 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 boom. Hey guys, it's Austin. Uh, we did have some issues with uh, some gunfire going off in the background. And it kind of ruined the audio on the short piece of video we did. We got the AR sighted in. Uh, we were using a rubber stop and got it to where we wanted it. And it uh, looked pretty good. Everything was hitting right where it should be. So we were happy about that. But all right, guys. Well, I'll catch you back up here in just a second. And uh, we'll see you over there with David. Thanks. Hey guys, it's Austin. Welcome back to Budget Hunters TV. Uh, today, uh, I know last time we left off, we had David with us. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, I didn't get to record. My camera went dead. My phone went dead before we got home. Uh, but this is Kevin. What's going on, guys? <laughs> And uh, today, Kevin gave me the inspiration. He said, hey, you ought to show them what kind of guns you have for hunting. <laughs> hey. Oh, no. <laughs> and this is a little Sun Mason here. What's up, brother? <laughs> and so we're going to go through what kind of guns I personally own. And I have three guns myself. Uh, what's our first gun, Kev? Uh, we got an AR-15 right here. Yeah, this is a DPMS uh, Sportable. AR-15. It's chambered in 223 or 5.56. Uh, it's obviously a lot different <laughs> than a, a stock one. Uh, modifications I've done to it so far are, this is what they call a quad rail. It's for your attachments. And uh, I think I paid around $15 for that off of the Wish app. Uh, I've got this, uh, this is a Pro, Nikon Pro Staff 3x9x40 scope. That I mounted with some uh, P series uh, scope mounts, and it's pretty good. I really, I really enjoyed it. I decided I decided I didn't know that long ago, 
and uh, I really enjoyed it. It's the BDC reticle, for those of you who know what that is. And uh, this little thing is my flashlight, and it is not just any flashlight. It actually shoots in green. It's a green light, which is uh, great for hog hunting, coyote hunting, and stuff, because the color is red and green, they can't see. So you can shine it right in their face, and they can't even see it which is great. I also changed out the charging handle to an ambidextrous charging handle and uh, makes it a little more comfortable than what it came on that I wasn't really happy with. And I also put on a sling to make it easier to carry. Now, I know the, and I also changed out the muzzle brake and uh, put on something a little, something I thought looked a little bit better, <laughs> which I know is a little funny, but that's what I like. And uh, I paid, 500 for the AR to start with, and I'll probably put another 150 into it. And so, I mean, I'm all in about 650, and this is my hog hunting gun. And uh, eventually, we'll do, do a, uh, a hog hunting video, probably come around around after the first of the year. Uh, we got the other gun. Yeah, let's move on to let's move on to something else. Big boy, uh, 12 gauge. That's right. This is a Mossberg Maverick 88 12 gauge. I bought when I was 16, which was 13 years ago. And uh, it is a pump action. So you want to show them how to use a pump. If you put your finger underneath that trigger, there's a little button right here. If you hold that, you can rack it. And it goes down to open right. And so it, uh, that, this is primarily what I do on public lands on occasion. Uh, I will use this as my slug gun, and uh, it is a smooth bore. Mason, where you going, boy? Where you going? Come down here. Come here, Mason. <laughs> Come here, boy. Oh man, that boy's uh, in trouble. <laughs> it's always, always fun being a daddy, isn't it, boy? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I also use it as a little bit of a home defense. I also have a different firearm we'll get into in a minute. I've actually shot this gun a couple of times. It's it's smooth, uh, you know, for being 13 years old. The 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 sighting is still pretty accurate, so it's a it's a good quality gun, and it's you budget hunters, hence it's a budget gun. You know, these aren't very expensive. They still sell this model. Yeah, the uh, they changed them very slightly, but they still sell the Maverick 88, and uh, the prices have remained about the same from when I bought mine uh, years ago. Uh, they are around two hundred dollars and might be able to go for a little bit less but it's going to be around two hundred with taxes and uh it's a great gun i use it for everything from dove to deer i've used it for duck and you know <laughs> knocking out pest you know pesky turtles down the pond that are eating all my fish and uh I'll one be... thing i will say that some shotguns don't have this one comes with it built in is a butt pad mason no no buddy <laughs> he loves the camera. And so, if, and, uh, this one actually came stock with it, which is nice. Some guns don't. And these are all unloaded. I'm not going to bring any loaded firearms right now. Uh, but it comes with bead sights. They're built in, so one in the front, one in the back. And it more or less helps you line stuff up. It's not, you know, it's not going to be a red dot or nothing like that. And you can change your sights and stuff and adjust them how you want to. Uh, it's got a rail up here, so you can mount whatever you want to to it. But for two hundred dollars, it's hard to beat. And plus, if you're first starting out shooting, this gun isn't a bad choice. Because whenever you buy, uh, whenever you buy a new gun, you don't want to stop, or you don't want to start at the head honcho. You want to start somewhere. And it's a really good starting gun. And this is a uh, this is a shotgun for you guys that don't know anything about guns. And so what that means in general, uh, and there are exceptions, but is that these do not shoot bullets like a regular right like a rifle or a pistol will these shoot shotgun shells and what a shotgun shell is it shoots out a series of bb's and they spread in a wide pattern and over a short distance uh, usually the effective range for a shotgun shooting shot is around 40 yards now they do sell rifle barrel shotguns which basically makes it a rifle and uh which we talked about rifling in one of our last videos and so this one is not that, but you people do, they do sell barrels and stuff like that where you can change them up and you can do it however you like to do it. But this is mine and 
been great. So I'm yeah. going to keep on. We're going to call this one the Black Hammer. <laughs> Black Hammer. All right, Kev, what's our next setup? Smith and Wesson, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was a. Uh, this is actually my first handgun I've ever owned. I've shot a bunch of them. I used to be a range officer and I've uh, been shooting since I was about four years old and uh, with my dad, <laughs> he taught me how. And so this is a Smith & Wesson SD9VE, which, which stands for self-defense nine millimeter value enhanced. And this made in uh, Springfield, Massachusetts by the Smith & Wesson Corporation. And uh, funny thing about this particular gun is it's actually uh, very similar to a Glock, uh, maybe like a Glock 19 somewhere in there. And uh, I do have a little aftermarket rubber slide on grip that just fits my bigger hand. I've shot Glocks and they're great guns, but I thought this one felt a little bit better for me. And it is a semi automatic, same as uh, the AR. It, for every one trigger pull, there is one bullet released. And so they, they are not fully automatic. They fully automatic is a Entirely different thing from where you pull the trigger and it keeps firing. If you pull the trigger and it will shoot one bullet and it will not shoot it again until you release the trigger and pull it again. And uh, this is one of the guns we cleaned the other day in the, the cleaning video. And uh, with the shotgun cleaning video, I will do eventually once I get my shotgun dirty again, we will clean it. And AR video, I'll do that as well. But uh, yeah, this is a it's been a great little gun. It's uh, got what they call a Picatinny rail, which is for adding attachments. And so if you want to put a laser or a flashlight or whatever it is you're trying to put on there, some people be real stupid and they'll put a bayonet or something on it, which <laughs> that's whatever you want to do. So for people who don't know, what, what kind of customization can you do with, with your pistol? What, what can you upgrade? Oh, uh, it depends on the gun. Some guns are more or less adaptable and you can do uh, more you can do different things with different ones. This one right here is actually, it's got its fair share of attachments, things you can do to it. You can change out the sights. This is the uh, rear sight and this is the front sight. They call these a dovetail sight. And uh, there, you see that there's two white dots to one white dot on the front. So you line up the two, get the one, keep the one in the center, height and sideways. And uh, once you load your magazine in, click it over and it will load. This gun is unloaded. I'm not going to bring a loaded gun out here and shoot it, especially since I'm inside the house. Uh, and one thing you can do is, like I say, I do. I did a personal grip, and they can have grips. I think uh, Crimson Trace makes some, and some other companies. I'm not sure, but uh, that when you actually put any pressure on the handle, a laser will actually shoot out the front. <laughs> so it's a full-on attachment. You can buy those. That's, I really don't care to do a laser, but if you if that's your preference, then good for you. <laughs> uh, the other things you can do, and one thing I did was there's a company online called Apex Tactical, and Apex Tactical sells a trigger kit. This gun comes with a eight pound trigger pull factory, and so when you're pulling the trigger back, that's how much pressure it takes to pull to pull, uh, pull the trigger. And so I put the Apex Tactical trigger in a series of springs, and so if you don't know how to do that, your local gunsmith can install it for you and they'll show you what they're doing. Uh, Mason. Come down here, buddy. Come on. <laughs> but, uh, and it dropped the trigger weight down to about five to six pounds. I don't have the uh, gauge. There's a gauge, a little hook that'll, when you pull it back, it'll say what the pr proper pressure is. Uh, I know it's comfortable enough for me. So I'm not what the exact weight is, I don't know. And if you guys are just that curious, eventually I'll buy one and I'll let you know what my trigger weight's on. And it's, it's by preference. I thought it was a little heavy. I thought the trigger had a little grip to it, like pulling through sand. Uh, but uh, now it's been great. And uh, it's definitely my favorite handgun. I've shot a whole bunch of them, and this one is definitely the best one for me. So, And Kevin's been looking at buying a shotgun. Kevin, have you thought, put any thought into what you're going to get? I was thinking about the Maverick. You know, it's it's a great starting uh, shotgun. and uh, And since... I'm working all the time. I just need something for home defense for right now, and the Maverick 88 is all I need. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Mossberg has been making uh, shotguns and stuff for a long time. They also do make rifles. Uh, and plus, I live in an apartment, so ain't no hunting there. 
<laughs> yeah. There's not a lot of hunting going on in uh, the apartment world. But it's, uh, you know, guns are something I've been raised with, and I understand that some people aren't comfortable around them. And that's okay, you know, and the guns aren't for everybody. If everybody bought guns, then, you know, well, that'd be kind of a dangerous situation. <laughs> if every single person is armed, then, you know, you're getting back into Wild West type of stuff. But, uh, so yeah. as, as far as pistols go, what do you recommend people? You know, that's, that's a good question. I've been asked that a lot. And the best answer I can give is, if you're looking to buy a pistol, uh, is for one, you gotta go, you gotta go look at it. Do, do your research, you know? Don't take my word for it. I mean, I'm not the end all be all on firearms, but I know what I know, and I'm, you know, I know what worked work for me. Now, I will say, uh, mm -hmm. the most hated gun that I know of is called a high point. And High Point has a horrible reputation for not working and having a bunch of issues. And so I wouldn't recommend that one specifically, any High Point products, because I know people are going to be like, oh, I've got a High Point for 50 years and it's been great. Okay, well, that's awesome, but you're, you're you know, you're the exception that proves the rule. So. Yeah, you're the needle in the haystack. That's right. <laughs> you're the needle in the haystack of a bunch of guns. And so they said, uh, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna buy a high point, then uh, you're basically getting an expensive hammer, and you might as well try to hit the bad guy. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of controversy amongst guns and amongst gun owners about which gun is better, and you know. And there are lots of great guns, though. I mean, this one is a, this one was pretty cheap. You know, I think I paid around three hundred dollars somewhere in that for these guns, and I think they still sell for about the same price. Uh, they are of the Sigma line, but without the Sigma problems. It was a val it was a gun that Smith and Wesson built to for the everyday person to be able to afford it without having to go spend a bunch of money. Well, they do offer higher, you know, the M P and some other uh, higher end, higher end pistols. Uh, there are lots of alternatives. Uh, I personally like uh, Sig Six Hour. Is uh, they make a fine firearm. I've shot a bunch of them and really enjoy them. Uh, I've tried a bunch of different Smith & Wessons, they're great guns. Glocks are infamous for being just unbelievably great guns that are just almost, you know, what they call bulletproof type of thing, you know. And they're, they're, they're super tough and great guns. I personally didn't, just, I just didn't like them, they didn't fit my hand well, but I'm a big dude, I'm six foot two, and I've got a big hand. And so I needed something that had a better grip to it, and uh, the Smith & Wesson was a better option for me. It's what I like better, it's a preference. Now, as far as caliber goes, you have a bunch of calibers to choose from, and there's a lot that I know, and there's even some I don't know. There are tons of calibers, and some really off-the-wall ones, but your most common are going to be your uh, 380 uh, AC, 380 ACP or whatever, the 9mm, uh, the 40, the 45, uh, the 38, the 357, the 44, I mean, there's a ton and I'm sure I'm not even naming all the common ones there's a lot and it's it depends on what you're using it for you know am I like if I'm gonna go if I'm gonna go be hunting bear and I want a backup gun am I gonna carry a nine millimeter no that's that's like shooting that's like shooting a BB gun at a person and saying oh you're you know, trying to defend yourself with that it's just not your best option it's probably just gonna piss them off so I wouldn't go with that myself but uh and like I say, you know, go go to your local gun range. A lot of them can a lot of them can rent you a gun while you're there. You know, not to leave the premises, but you know, you can rent it to shoot for the day. And go go put go put a little time in and find out which one's best for you. Which make which one makes you happy. Which one goes says, oh, that feels great and it's you know simplicity and so there are lots of options. And the uh, 357 and the 38 and the 44 and things like that. Most common, you're going to find those in a uh, revolver style, <laughs> and uh, the regular nine millimeters and things like that, 40, 45, are going to be more predominantly in semi-automatic. Hey guys, that's awesome. Uh, I had a little issue. Uh, you can see here, this is uh, me doing my editing, uh, editing this video. <laughs> and found out that the video actually cut off so yeah <laughs> uh well anyway i mean i hope you enjoyed what i've got to show you i know it's uh 
drags on a little bit, which I'm working on. But uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, leave them down in the comments below. Because I really want to hear from you guys. If you guys have, say, oh, I'd like to see this done. Or, you know, I would like to have this question answered. If you have anything like that that you'd like to see, feel free to say something. You know, go ahead. Right there. Right down at the very bottom is a little comments box. You can put whatever it is you want to find out, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. But guys, thank you so much for watching Budget Hunters TV. I hope you learned something, and I hope you had fun. And if you guys want to see me again, and make sure I keep making these videos, make sure you click that like button and subscribe. All right, guys. I'll see you around.